Hey guys, my name is Cora Frederick and today I'm going to be showing you through a series of videos how to complete the 4-H horse safety certification in Wyoming. Now, as we go through this process, I want you all to remember that none of these things have to be done perfectly, but they just must be done safely. The purpose of a safety certification is to be sure that you, the horse handler, can interact safely with your horse. So not only does the safety certification test your knowledge about horses and know-how about handling them, it also tests your horse for how safe they are around you, their handler. So without further ado, let's get started. Section 1A of the safety certification is youth. Ears. Muzzle. Throat latch. Withers, girth, chest, back, flanks, pastern, Head stall, curb or chin strap, front cinch, back cinch, breast collar, stirrup, stirrup leather keeper, horn, cantle. Next, we will look at the safety zones for a horse. As you can see in green, this is the sweet spot where the horse handler must be standing unless they have safe contact with the horse. There are two safe ways to move around a horse. The first is moving at least six feet away from their hind end. The second is moving with close contact on the horse's hind. Here, I will demonstrate a safe location and an unsafe location to tie up a horse. This green gate is not a safe location to tie my horse. This fence is a safe location as it is sturdy and stable. I will now proceed to tie my horse in this location. When I tie my horse, I am sure to tie her above her withers and using the safe release knot. Further on in this video, I will exhibit how to tie the, the quick release knot. This is appropriate attire for working with horses. You must make sure that you have closed toed shoes and long pants on. Section 2A is groundwork. Next, I will proceed to catch both of my horses. Since your horse will already be caught when you arrive at horse safety certification, you will need to take the halter off of your horse and then proceed to catch them again. This is to ensure that you know how to properly catch your horse and put on the halter. This is also to ensure that your horse is safe for you to be around and catch, even when you have already taken the halter off once. To correctly lead the horse, I am holding close to the horse's halter with my right hand and carrying the slack from the lead rope in my left. Here I am demonstrating how to tie the horse using the quick release knot. It is important that youth know how to correctly and safely pick up and clean out the foot. 
It is important to clean out your horse's feet just in case they have any rocks or debris stuck in between the frog and the hoof wall. You can see that I am using a pick to clean out the horse's foot and safely holding the foot in my hand by keeping my thumb tucked in with the rest of my hand. It can be a little more difficult to pick up and clean out the back foot, so some smaller or younger, or younger youth may not feel confident. However, this is the correct position for picking up and cleaning out the feet. As you can see here, my horse's feet were already fairly clean, but this is the correct position to hold the horse's foot on your leg. I am again using the pick to get out any debris from the horse's foot. Now I am demonstrating how to safely release the back foot by first releasing the foot from my leg and then stepping away from the horse. Sometimes you will need to change sides while you're leading your horse. This is where it is important for your horse to be safe to cross in front of. As you can see when I change sides, I am also changing the hand that holds underneath the horse's halter and switching the slack to the opposite hand. When backing your horse, turn around, face them, and pull their jaw towards their hip bone. Then step towards the horse and ask them to back. It is important for the youth to know how to change directions while leading the horse, in case there are patterns or gates that require them to do so. When passing through a gate, I am going to begin leading my horse with my left hand and then opening the gate with my right. I am asking my horse to back up so that I do not hit her with the gate and scare her. Next, I ask her to pass through the gate. I made sure to open the gate wide enough to give her a clear shot through. Next, I'm turning her around in a wide circle and going back to close the gate safely. It is important that your horse knows how to back up away from you as you close the gate towards them. Section 2B is riding. First, you must demonstrate that you know how to change from halter to bridle. As you can see, my horse is untied throughout this process. I put the halter around her neck and then I begin to bridle her. First, I put the nose band on over her nose and then over each ear. Horses ears can be sensitive, so you have to make sure to put them on one at a time and pull their ear through as quickly as possible to minimize them being startled, as you can see my horse was in this video. Next, I am going to begin to put on the bridle of my horse. First, I put the head stall over her nose. Now I am asking her to lower her head so that it makes it a little easier for me. I'm switching the top of the bridle into my right hand and guiding the bit into my horse's mouth gently. Once she takes the bit, I am then going to guide the halter over each of her ears and fix her forelock so that she looks pretty. Next, I am going to secure the throat latch of the bridle. I am repeating the same process to change from halter to bridle 
on my gelding. First, making sure that he is untied, then switching the halter onto his neck. Now, I will guide the bridle up over his nose, switch hands and hold the bridle in between his ears after asking him to lower his head, of course. Now, I will gently guide the bit into the horse's mouth and secure both ears into the headstall. I will now secure the throat latch under his throat. When securing the throat latch, it is important that the horse has some room to breathe. This will allow them to bend their head and collect as you are riding him. Many people are different with their techniques, but I like to give about four fingers of space between the leather strap and the horse's throat. It is important to clean out your saddle pad and your cinches to make sure there is no debris or things that could poke your horse and make them uncomfortable during the ride. Here, I am dusting off my saddle pad and making sure that there are no pokey things in there. Now, I am showing my horse the pad so that he knows what's going on to his back, and then I'm going to gently set the pad onto his back. If you are a young rider or if you are small like me, don't worry if you have to have someone help you saddle your horse like my mom is here. Just make sure that you're watching and that you can explain how to safely saddle your horse by yourself when you're big enough. Next, I am going to release my cinches, make sure that they are free of debris, and untwist them if they are twisted up from the saddle. Here's the part where I will be tightening my cinches and adjusting the saddle. When saddling, it is important to use the safe techniques for moving around your horse. As you can see, I remained close to my horse and gave contact with his rear end as I moved around behind him. When you secure the latigo, make sure that you are not pinching your horse in any way. As you tighten the cinch, it is important that the horse is comfortable and in a safe environment. It is important to secure the front cinch before you secure the back cinch. When unsaddling, you are going to do the reverse order. First uncinching the back cinch, then undoing the front cinch. This is another safety measure that, is in, that it is important for you to know before safety certification. Next, I am going to be demonstrating how, to, how I saddle my horse with the English saddle. It is a bit simpler and a lot lighter than the Western saddle.
It is important to adjust your saddle for your size and the horse's size. Here, I am adjusting my stirrup leathers so that they are long enough for me to ride. Next, I will be demonstrating how to mount, dismount, and ride both horses for both disciplines. Follow along with the words at the bottom left and your safety certification sheet to see what I'm doing. As I mentioned before, none of these maneuvers have to be perfect. You are not showing your horse now. However, the people doing the safety certification must be able to see that you are riding your horse in a safe manner and that you are able to control it. <laughs> 